Throughout the duration of this course, it's useful to keep in mind that there are several characters that you can type on the keyboard that are interpreted as special to the shell. I'll show you the list of those characters now. They are the following. Each one of those characters has a special meaning to the shell. The shell employs each of those characters to do something clever or offer some feature to the user. Some of these I would expect you to know what they do already. In fact, I would expect you to know the meaning of the characters on the top line. Let's do a quick recap of those. The first is the ampersand symbol that is used to run commands asynchronously or run them in the background. It also has another meaning which we'll examine later on in the course. The next one is the asterisk or star and that's used in wildcard characters mistake and that's used as a wildcard character in file name expansions such as star.txt or fred.star if you're trying to say move or copy or delete or list all files. Similarly the question mark character and the next two characters, the square brackets, are also used as wildcard characters. Then the next two, the less than sign or and the greater than sign, they're used to redirect standard input and standard output to and from a program and the last one on the top line is what we call the pipe symbol or the vertical bar symbol which is used to pipe output from one command to the input of another as we saw in the last module. Now the rest of them you'll be discovering throughout the remainder of this course. We'll discover the special purpose behind all of them. In fact in the next module we're going to have a look at the meaning of the pound symbol or the hash symbol which is the fourth one in from the left on the second row. But Before we do, I'll just explain a bit about what you do with special characters if you need to use them. The first thing is that you should keep in mind avoid using any of these special characters when naming files. Now it is possible to use these characters in file names. It is possible for example to put a dollar sign into a file name but it's tricky to do so and you're going to make a lot of work for yourself later on in life if you do. So the trick is to generally just avoid them. Incidentally, you should note of course that it is never possible to give a file a name that includes the forward slash character. This character is not actually special to the shell, but it is very special to the operating system when used in naming files. So the summary of that is you can't use the forward slash character. You can use all the other characters, although I recommend that you don't. Characters like the full stop, the comma, the underscore and the dash, they're all fine of course and can be used whenever you want. Now more importantly for the scope of this course, if it's ever actually necessary to pass one of these characters as a parameter to another program, and it will become necessary, especially when you use things like grep and sed and so on, it is possible to do that. It is possible to, if you like, remove the specialness of the character as far as the shell is concerned, so the shell treats it just like any other character. And then of course that character is then passed in as a parameter to another program who will probably treat it as special in some other way and use it accordingly. Now if you want to do that, if you want to actually cause the shell to not regard the character as special just for the purpose of one particular command, then you've got to do one of three different things. You either prefix the character with a backslash, for example if you wanted to cause the dollar sign to be no longer special just for the scope of one particular command, then you would put a backslash in front of the dollar sign. Let me show you an example of that. If I type in that I want the echo command to run and I want the echo command to print out the following. The fee is ten dollars then I actually get the fee is zero. Now something's obviously gone wrong here because we're getting out zero instead of ten dollars. Now I know what's gone wrong but I wouldn't expect you to know what's gone wrong just yet so I won't explain it to you because it'll only confuse you. What we do know is that the dollar sign is being treated as a special character. So instead of using the dollar sign as its regular special character, I'll remove its specialness and I'll do exactly the same thing and say the fee is backslash dollar sign 10 and then we get exactly what we want. The dollar sign is no longer treated as a special character for the shell so it is passed in to the echo command 
who just prints it straight back out to the screen for us. The second way to remove the specialness of a character is to surround the character with a pair of double quotes or rabbit ears or whatever you want to call them. And you should note that this actually doesn't work for all of the characters. In fact, it doesn't work for the dollar sign, but it does work for just about all the others. Let me show you an example. If I wanted to echo out the following word words on the screen, comments begin with a hash character or a pound character. I'm going to call it the hash character for the remainder of this course. And I press enter and I don't actually get what I think I'm going to get. I get comments begin with a hmm, nothing else. That's because the hash character is special to the shell. Wherever the shell sees the hash character, it ignores the character and everything else after it on the line. So the echo program is not even seeing the hash or the word character. All the echo program ever gets to see, all it ever gets passed from the shell, are the words comments begin with a, which it of course duly echoes straight back out to the screen. So I can fix that up by putting double quotes around, nope, not there, and there, and then it of course works. The way most people do something like that is they simply put the double quotes around the entire text. They don't put it necessarily just around one character, although that will actually work, and so you get something like that. Getting back to our earlier example, if I was to put the double quotes around the fee is $10, notice that it doesn't actually fix the problem because the double quotes don't actually remove the special meaning of the dollar sign. There is another technique that we can use to do that if we don't feel like using the backslash character. That third and final technique is to surround the character with a pair of single quote characters or apostrophe characters. And you can do this for every character that there is except for, of course, the single apostrophe itself. Here's this command again, now with the single quotes, and of course that works perfectly. Notice that the quotes never get actually echoed out themselves. OK, well that's just about all you need to know about special characters at the moment. You will find them to be extraordinarily painful to use sometimes when you're using them in conjunction with said or grep or some other character mistake or some other command. It's often difficult to know where the double quotes or single quotes need to go or whether you need to put backslashes and how many backslashes you need to put in place. That's all ahead of us and we'll find all of that stuff out during the exercises.